All in was about, I probably had to go to the extra length um, in becoming the player that I was. I think of the ice baths, the meditation, the yoga, um, the Pilates, all this that built into the player that I was, but then go out there and do the skills that I need to do. I smile when I hear the word tough nut on the football field because I probably didn't have as much talent or skill as the guys that were around me or in front of me, but I had to get everything out of myself. I still thought I was a good player, but it did take everything to be um, the player that I was. And I also had the duty of care as captain to make sure my teammates were uh, on board with trying to get the best out of themselves. So that's probably why I chose the uh, titles all in. There's definitely some highs and lows around leadership. Um, I think of the times where I've probably felt the most happiest were when I was having impact on um, individuals' lives, whether they played one game at the Geelong Footy Club or played 250, and you'd get a special message from them, and they would be along the lines of, thanks for always looking out for me. The low times probably come off the back of tough results, um, and I think of the prelim losses that we had. I played in 12 prelims along my journey in the AFL um, and only made six grand finals, so that means I had a 50-50 record. So I had some pretty tough losses. Well, leadership's been a big part of my life, obviously. Some of those values were simply to be a good person, you know, to look out for people and, um, and also take care of yourself too. My journey in the AFL, um, guys that I looked up to in a leadership space were the two captains that went before me at Geelong, um, Tom Harley and Cameron Ling, which you'll hear plenty about in the book. And then also um, I had a coaches along the way. Um, Brendan McCartney was one of them. Um, he was a line coach at Geelong. And then I had Chris Scott um, for a number of years that helped out along that way. Uh, and a guy named Nigel Lappin, who uh, I spent uh, about 12 years with, who coached the footy club too. Yeah, I loved working with Chris Scott. He was a guy that um, had a big influence on my life, not only as a football player, but um, someone that I really look up to in life too. Has a great outlook. Um, he looks at the big picture probably better than anyone that I know of. And I've learned many lessons across many years from him. Um, why we work so well together, I think we understood where we could help each other most. And that's really important in a captain and coach relationship. Chris obviously played for Brisbane um, for many years. He was a tough footballer. Um, he had his twin brother that was, you know, his right hand man next to him. They were tough. And I love watching them play. Uh, I would have loved playing with them because you knew what you are going to get every week. And uh, they were the players that uh, you'd like to take the field with. I was 23 when I became captain of the Geelong Footy Club. It was a, uh, it was a testing time for the club. We were very stable for many years. Um, and then uh, the time that I came in, I probably was able to do it because I had a lot of good people around me. It was a tough time, I say that, because there was, the game was changing lots. There was two new teams coming in. Um, there was free agency also coming into the AFL landscape, which we didn't know much about. So it was a time where I had to keep forever changing. And um, I'm glad that I did, because it made me more of a whole person. Yeah, well, team culture has been a big part of why Geelong is who it is. Um, and I was pretty fortunate that I walked into a place at a young age of 18, straight out of school, into a culture where individuals just want to make each other better. Um, and we were fortunate that we were in a team environment that um, was able to get that out of each other. And then it became quite addictive along the journey too of playing in finals and the biggest games. And I feel very fortunate that I got to do that across my career. I only missed out on one final series. Um, which I may be still a little bit dirty with, but uh, it, was a, it was such a fun time and the best time to play footy was uh, at the end of the year in September. Sitting in the position as captain, um, you definitely had to keep an eye on the culture along the journey. Uh, my job was to set up an environment that um, guys wanted to come to work and get the best out of themselves, but also have fun whilst doing it. And uh, there, there wasn't uh, too many tough challenges along the way. I had a lot of great helpers, 
um, and the support network um, was really important. I think throughout my footy career, I learned many different lessons, but um, the one around looking after people was probably the, the key one that's um, come quite naturally to me. But I just wanted to make sure that I could get the best out of them, whether they worked across the business and make them feel like they got the most important job at the football club. That was a key um, to my leadership. So it meant people wanted to come into work and have fun at work and also feel, feel valued. So one that I'll forever be grateful for. So I grew up around brothers. So uh, IVF journey is completely new to me and it was to Brit too. It's not something that we wanted to do. It found our way to us and we chose to be all in on it. And with that, it was, um, it taught us to be really patient. It taught us, well, Brit was, you know, her attention to detail was unbelievable on when she had to be at appointments, um, when she had to take certain injections or, um, you know, tablets throughout the day. It was a really tough time um, for the period of time that we went through it. And um, I'll be forever grateful that she was willing to take that journey. So we have got our little bundle of joy of Joey at the moment and, um, and we look at him and think we're the luckiest people every day. I think sharing the journey of IVF throughout the book was really important because it showed that I was able to do the AFL journey and then have this thing on the side that was much more important to me and my wife. It was one that wasn't easy, um, but to live it and to share it was also important to, to do because um, we understand that we're not the first ones to go through it and we won't be the last ones. And we hope that we give a hope to people out there that um, may be struggling a chance that uh, they will one day become parents too. It was a really hard chapter to write, um, but it was an important one because we needed Brit to be involved in it. And, um, you know, there is scarring um, that will probably forever be around, but um, it was really important to get the finer detail on exactly how she was feeling through it too. So um, it was really important that we could share that and I'm forever grateful that she chose to have her captions in the book too. Whether you come in on Monday, it was important that um, people couldn't tell if we won or lost on the weekend. So that, that was a good leveler in life, I reckon. Never know if we won and got too ahead of ourselves or lost and got too down on ourselves. So um, it was one that I continually tell workforces these days that um, it's nice to come in with that level approach. The book obviously goes into my career, but it also shows probably a bit behind the scene of leadership and everyday living of life too. Um, I never took myself too seriously, and I also love that I got to learn lessons along the way. So hopefully those that read it get the same effect. Uh, what's next for Joel? Well, I'm going to go on a big holiday here, so <laughs> time to freshen up. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's next. I look forward to the next part of my life. I'm interested in doing something else really well. So. I think it's in the football space, but I'm not quite sure just yet.